the teachers who have been teaching meditation for thousands of years have called the condition that most human beings are in being asleep. And what they mean by that is most human beings believe that they are their personality. They believe that they are their physical body. And the reality of it is that's simply not the case. It's simply not the case. And so if you believe you're something that you're not, you're dreaming. It's a state of sleep. Through practicing meditation, what happens is you begin to discover your true nature. By moving attention from the thinking activity to watching the body breathing, if you start to experience the absence of thinking, you will begin to experience your true nature. If you start to experience the absence of thinking, you will begin to experience your true nature, and you will discover that your true nature is awareness itself, not the thinker. The thinker is the voice in your head, and that, think, that thinker that's the voice in your head is the voice of your mind. It's the voice of conditioning. It judges and evaluates everything. It's what gets upset. It's what is dissatisfied. It's what wants what it doesn't have. It, it's what's avoiding things that it doesn't like. These teachings go back thousands of years, and it's not about religion. This is not religion. Now we know through science that the brain changes all the time. The brain is it's called neo, neuroplasticity. The brain's changing all the time, which means your brain is learning all the time. It's learning from how, you, how you're being. It's learning from the thoughts that are going on in your mind. It's learning from your behavior. It's learning from your understanding what reality is. And so your brain thinks that you are a personality because it's, it's, it, it, that's what you taught it to believe, that you're a personality and that you're a physical body. And so it's operating as if that's the case when in fact that's not the case. And so we all have disturbed brains. We all have brains that are operating in confusion. We all have brains that are trying to get life to work. And it's a desperate process because the approach that the brain is using, the approach that you're using to get life to work will never work. Why? Because the way the personality and the brain works is it's constantly relating to what's going on in terms of is, is this what should be happening? Do I like what's happening? Do I want this to be happening? And if you start to pay attention to the voice in your head and you start to pay attention to your emotions and you start to pay attention to your physical, the sensations in your physical body, you'll notice that you're in different stages of upset all the time. You know, from mild upset in terms of being you know, a little bit annoyed or concerned about the fact that your life isn't going the way you want it to go, to serious upset, like being crazy upset, you know, crazy upset in terms of feeling anxious or depressed or worse. So these are all different states of condition that we're living our life in. And so you, you could say that the practice of meditation is a practice that is intended to end suffering to end suffering. What is suffering? What is the suffering that human beings are experiencing? If you start to wake up and pay attention, you'll see it for yourself. The suffering that human beings are experiencing is they're constantly, the, the mind and the brain is constantly comparing what's going on. It's comparing it to the past. It's comparing it to what you want in the future. It's comparing it to what you like and what you don't like. And there's a constant process going on there in which the mind and the brain are resisting or rejecting whatever is happening that should not be happening. And if you start to pay attention, you'll start to see this going on. This is common. It's happening to all of us all the time. All you have to do is pay attention when you're driving your car. It's a perfect example. And you'll notice that the people in front of you should not be going that slow. That's obvious, right? And so not only is that the way that the, you're operating, the voice in your head starts saying nasty things about the cars in front of you, right? But you're totally identified with that. And one of the craziest things of all about human behavior, and if you look at this and you see what I'm pointing to here, it should shock you. And the craziest thing about human behavior is human beings believe that what the voice in your head says is true. Is that not so? You, you believe what the voice in your head is telling you is true. You think that voice is you, and you think that voice is you observing reality, observing what's going on, right? 
when in fact that voice is not you, that voice is the voice of your conditioning, the voice of the past, right? And it's rejecting anything that doesn't fit its picture. It's rejecting anything that doesn't feel good. It's rejecting anything that's not consistent with what you want it to be. And this goes on on different levels all day long. It goes on all day long on different levels. And so what happens is that we find ourselves avoiding things. We find ourselves living our life trying to get what we want and avoid what we don't. And the mental activity is a constant process that's talking about that. It's, it's narrating your life. It's telling you what's going on. And most of us believe that what it's saying is the truth. This is an ironic, insane reality when you start to see it because you begin to realize that this simply doesn't work. It's dysfunctional. Right now, there, the number of people in this room is the number of different experiences of, of the world separate experiences, different experiences of the world. And every one of you, uh, without realizing it unwittingly, is believing that what the experience you're having of the world, the process in your mind, what the voice in your head is saying is true. And the result of that is called war, right? Because if, if, if one person believes what they uh, think is the, what the voice in their head is saying is true, and another person believes what the voice in their head is true, and what these voices are telling them makes uh, what the other person's believing to be a threat, uh, then we're into a survival operation. Right? Most of us are living under threat. Most of us are living our life experiencing threats. Not just, not physical threats, not physical threats. The brain has been conditioned to protect you from physical threats, right? To keep the body alive. There's no problem with that. But the personality is also experiencing threats to its existence. This is where it starts to get complicated, and this is where it's important to start to spend some time studying the teachings. Why? Because this personality that we believe we are, that we're busy surviving all the time, that we're busy identifying with, that we're busy trying to get it what it wants and needs, does not actually exist. So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to take this on face value. You don't have to believe what I'm saying, because if you practice meditation and you study the teachings that go along with it, you'll see this for yourself. You've been busy spending your time being something that doesn't exist. You cannot show me your personality, and the reason you can't show it to me is because it doesn't exist. It only exists as a thought process. This is why, when we practice meditation, we're moving attention away from the thinking activity to following the breath, to watching the body breathe, so we can get away from this process of being the personality, which isn't real, it's only a thought activity, to start to be able to wake up and start to be able to look at it. If you're identified with the voice in your head, then you're never looking at it. You think you are it. And this is why you believe what it's telling you, right? But if you start to practice meditation and you move your attention away from that thought activity and look back at it, you can see that, well, I must not be that because I can look at that. Anything I can see can't be me. Right? So you start to wake up to the truth. You start to wake up to the reality that your true nature is awareness itself. This is good news. This is good news because the practice of meditation allows you the, to end the suffering that's being caused by identifying with the personality, which isn't real, and begin to identify with the awareness, which is real. The awareness is real. The awareness is, is what you are. You know you're here because you're aware you're here, right? Which means that you are the awareness. You could have an accident and get a brain injury and lose your memory. This is a fact. You could have an accident and lose your memory. And if you lose your memory, you don't know who you are anymore. Now, listen, if that's the case, it must mean that the only way you know who you are is to remember it. How real can that be? If the only way you can know who you are is to remember it, how real can that be? And the proof of what I'm saying is that if you had a head injury and you lost your memory, you would not know who you are. That's a fact. However, if you begin to experience the truth, which is that you are the awareness itself, even with a brain injury, that doesn't change. 
Even somebody that loses their memory and doesn't know who they are is still aware because that awareness is your true nature. It is the natural state. And through the practice of meditation, you will gradually move your identity from thinking that you're the personality to having a direct, consistent experience of the truth, which is that you are the awareness. This is good news because when you experience this awareness that is your real nature, you're experiencing something called well-being. Well-being. That's why the brain scientists are telling us meditation is very important to practice because it's a practice that will allow you to experience well-being. What is well-being? Well-being is an experience that's not a condition. It's an experience that's always occurring that the awareness is having all the time. And the experience involves peace, satisfaction, happiness, peace, satisfaction, happiness, clarity. This is, the, this is the state of being that becomes available through the practice of meditation. And as you gradually start to experience this state of being instead of the state of mind, right, your life starts to change in a positive direction. You, st you stop identifying with the unstable reality that goes on in the mind, and you start to identify with the awareness that is always in a state of well-being. So that by practicing meditation consistently, you will be in a psychotherapeutic process because you will wake up and start paying attention to the thought process, and when it goes off the rails, you don't go with it. When it's crazy, you see that it's crazy, and you don't act it out. You don't repeat what it's saying. You don't behave consistent with what it's telling you to behave because you now have come to the realization, that's not who I really am, and I don't need to follow that. That's running a survival program, and I don't need to survive as a personality because a personality is only a thought process. It doesn't need to survive. Yeah, the body needs to survive. You're going to continue to experience you know, life as we experience it. You know. But our bodies are not under threat. You know, we're, we're, this isn't Gaza. You know, our bodies aren't under threat. Most human beings in today's world don't experience a threat to their physical survival in their life. Most of us don't, especially this group, you know. You're not experiencing a threat to your survival of your physical life. And yet you experience feeling threatened because the experience of threat that you experience is not to the physical body, it's to the idea you have about who you are called the personality. You could call it self-image, your self-image, your self-concept, right? That's what you're busy surviving all the time. And you feel threatened, your personality feels threatened whenever somebody behaves in a way that makes you feel invalid, that makes you feel that, the, that they're, you're being disrespected or makes you feel like your personality is illegitimate. So the personality uh, gets into states of upset. The personality gets into states of anxiety and depression, right? because it's failing to function effectively in life. It keeps the psychologist busier all the time. Right? And you don't need psychotherapy if you practice uh, med meditation the way it's meant to be done and you study the teachings because you will begin to be involved in a practice of waking up and seeing things as they really are, recognizing who you really are, and you stop participating in the craziness that goes on in your mind. And when you deprive that process of your attention, it calms down, it unwinds, it slows down, and your mind starts to be very quiet. This is the promise. This is, this is the possibility that meditation is presenting us with. And so it's very important to hear talks like this because it will motivate you to want to get this possibility to be the experience that you're having. And it's very important to be motivated to practice meditation because left on your own devices, you will fail. Because in the beginning, it's challenging. In the beginning, it's like learning to play the piano. Nobody wants to go through that part. Everybody wants to play music. Same thing with meditation. You know, your mind will tell you, oh, you're not doing it right. You're not getting the result that that guy said you can get. So you don't know how to do this. You might as well just have a beer. <laughs> That's the way the mind works. Well, you need to practice, you know? If you practice this over time, you can get good enough at it that your mind could be going nuts and you're just watching it. You're not being it. That's the difference. 
but it takes time to get to that part, right? You have to put up with the beginning stages of this, like learning to play the piano, you have to just keep doing these practices on the keys. Nobody likes to do that, they wanna play music. Nobody wants to go through all this practice of meditation every, every single day, but you want the benefits, you know? You wanna be awake, you wanna be happy, you wanna be satisfied, you want peace. Well, the, the reality of it is that we all have to go through a process of conditioning in order to function in the world. In other words, you all, we all have to learn to be a personality even though it's not real. Because that's the, traf that's the way we traffic among ourselves, as personalities, right? But that doesn't mean it's who we are and we can come out of that confusion. You'll still have a personality, but you won't be being one. And when you have a personality and you're not being one, the effect that that has on you changes. You stop being so stressed out. You can start to pay attention and see what Brian was talking about. You know, if you start to wake up and you start witnessing what's really going on in your head during the day, it should scare you. It should really scare you because it's, it's causing you to suffer. This is suffering. The mental state that people live their lives in is suffering. Suffering, the, the, the discontent of it all, you know? Little things, if you just start to practice paying attention, you'll see the little things that go on. You know, if you're waiting, if you go to the supermarket and, and you're waiting in line, you know, if you start to watch the mental process, you start to watch the voice in your head, how it's talking about who's in front of you, you know? Or why aren't they going faster? That person didn't take their money out until it was time to pay. <laughs> the hell's wrong with them, right? This is going on 24 seven in our heads, right? And so you're driving yourself crazy. You don't need any help, right? You're driving yourself crazy. So this is meditation can offer you a way out of the suffering. It can offer you the opportunity to experience your true nature. It can offer the opportunity to start experiencing waking up in the morning without a crazy day ahead of you. To wake up in the morning without a burden on your shoulders. It's not gonna happen overnight. Right? That's why I, I say, you know, if you hear what I'm saying and you want what I'm talking about, then you have to come to this class on a regular basis. Repetition is necessary. You have to go online to my YouTube channel under David Parrish and start listening to some of these talks. Right? Start to learn about your true nature, start to learn about how your brain works and how your mind works so you can, you can get away from this insane situation that you're existing in. It's up to you. Nobody can, you know, one of my meditation teachers used to say, you know, nobody can do this for you. You know, you have, to, you have to work your way out of the insane condition that most of us are finding ourselves in in the world. It's not complicated. You just experience, you know, the technique. It's not complicated. What's complicated is doing it every single day without fail. And what's complicated is once you start to experience waking up, to start to learn to pay attention consistently, not only when you're practicing meditation, but all day long, start to pay attention and watch what the voice in your head is saying. And when it's crazy, you notice it's crazy. You're not crazy. See, this is the good news. You know, uh, people who believe that they're the voice in their head think that something must be wrong with me, right? Because if I'm thinking this way, and if I'm out of control, and if what I get angry, I lose control and behave poorly and, and cause suffering for people and myself, something's just not functioning right here. And so it's about time to start to wake up and look at it and see it for, see it for what it really is. You know, see it for what it really is. Hmm and then start to practice meditation every single day. The brain scientists are telling us within uh, as short as eight weeks of practicing meditation every single day, your brain will have already started to change. And when your brain changes, you change because that's the center of operation in your life. 